I understand the logic behind social distancing, but this is starting to get out of hand. Paddleboarder chased by boat arrested in Malibu. Basketball hoops and tennis courts are starting to get taken down all across the country. Banning people from buying seeds to grow their own food in certain supermarkets. I thought this was a joke or maybe fake news out of context pictures, but I looked into it pushing too far. Michigan governor criticized for aggressive social distancing orders. She put an executive order banning the sale of non-essential goods, including clothing, gardening seeds, and car seeds seats on Friday. She also outlawed visits to other residences, including visits to a vacation home or a neighbor's house. Maybe you could pull some inspiration from our Italian brothers and sisters. Cominciano ad esserci le telecamere fisse con e Stefano Baldini nel tratto finale. Siamo vicini, Radio. sta per entrare, Lo Panathinaiko è a vista Stefano Baldini, il suo ingresso al Panathinaiko nell'ultima gara della Olimpiade 28. Stefano Baldini, attenzione che è lunga ancora perché c'è un giro, c'è uno stadio da compiere. Dietro un Matt Keplesighi che non ha mollato del tutto ma qualcosa sì. Pochi metri ancora, vai Stefano, ci siamo. Stefano metri. Baldini, Stefano Baldini, pochi metri. La vittoria è tutta sua. Ultima medaglia ed è d'oro di questi giochi olimpici. La maratona, una delle gare simbolo dei giochi olimpici è italiana. It's a great video. Speaking of our European friends, leave it up to the UK to take this to the next level. If you think that by going for a picnic in a rural location no one will find you, don't be surprised if an officer appears from the shadows. I thought we were supposed to keep 6 to 12 feet apart. I didn't know this was worldwide house arrest where innocent citizens were not allowed to go in the sun, stay thousands upon thousands of feet or yards away from the next person, and enjoy a picnic with somebody that they're around anyway. It's starting to look a lot less like health precautions and a lot more like tyranny. This guy in Philly getting dragged off a bus for not wearing a mask. Even Ted Cruz said, wouldn't it be simpler to just give him a mask? YouTuber Blair White, I'm on my morning walk with my dog and a cop who's not wearing a mask, comes up to me and tells me to put on a mask or be fined a thousand dollars. Stop the insanity. And it's not just Democrat states either. Mississippi police issue $500 tickets to drive-in church service attendees. In the wake of the coronavirus outbreak, Temple Baptist Church began running its services using radio frequencies that can only be heard within a one block radius of the church. So now I guess pulling up to a drive-in church service will get you a fine in a red conservative state. This is madness, guys. One of our founding fathers allegedly tried to warn us about this. Ben Franklin, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither, or roughly translated to any society that would give up a little liberty to gain temporary security will deserve neither and will lose both. I understand the science and logic behind social distancing and masks. I actually apparently understand it better than the World Health Organization and the Surgeon General of America, who for weeks backflopped saying that the masks don't work, now they do work. They didn't work because they didn't know it was asymptomatic, even though everybody knew it was asymptomatic and it could spread that way. I get the science behind it. But busting up picnics and drive-in church services and paddleboarders paddleboarding alone, this is getting insane. And the president's being said that in order to save lives, every life matters, whether it's 10,000, 100,000, a million, 10 million, lives matter so the government can infringe upon our lives, our rights, our right to publicly assemble, our right to open a business. They can do that to save lives. That's the president we're setting. So this question has to be asked, do they really care about every life and do they really care about our health? So far, according to worldmeters.info, there's been about 116,000 coronavirus deaths worldwide. I agree, every single life matters. Even the charlatans at the World Health Organization admit harmful use of alcohol kills up to 3 million people annually, accounting for 5% of the global disease burden. So let's just ban alcohol, right? And we can save 3 million deaths worldwide. Even if this virus reaches 20 times as many people as it has today, that's the precedence we're setting, right? Government can infer on our lives and change the rules in order to save lives because every life matters. In the span of January to March, what else happened in the world? The media didn't tell you these facts about coronavirus. From January 1st to March 30th, around 35,000 people died from the virus. During this same time period, 119,000 died from the flu. 612,000 due to alcohol, 1.2 million due to smoking, 2 million due to cancer, 3.2 million due to communicable diseases such as tuberculosis, 411,000 from HIV slash AIDS, and 10.4 million due to abortion. Is this really worth causing 6.6 .6 million Americans to lose their job and being surged into debt while tanking the American economy? 
but this is something I really think about. If they're really serious about health, why did the health experts tell us the food pyramid was the way to go? Eat a lot of cheese, eat a lot of bread, eat a lot of cereal, which is basically just made of sugar. They care so much about our health, why don't they force the hand of cereal companies to make more healthy products? Why don't we do a mandatory government five day a week workout so we can save millions of lives over the course of a couple years from preventable heart disease and illnesses that come with the unhealthy lifestyle that's pretty much synonymous with the American lifestyle that they fed to us through advertisements, through culture, and through eating habits. The logic is the government can just shut down everything, ruin millions of lives, millions of jobs, destroy millions of salaries, millions of small businesses, if they could save lives, whether it's 10,000, 20,000, 300,000, or a million like they first projected, or 80,000 to 60,000 like they're now lowering it to. We could save way more lives by shutting down other parts of society. And I don't get the people who say, no, it's not the same because this is a rapidly spread disease so it makes it different. Well, that makes it even harder to stop. It's a lot easier to just ban alcohol or do these other stuff. You could save lives a lot easier. And I'm not saying I really wanna ban alcohol. I'm just saying it's a very dangerous standard to set that the government can infringe on any part of your life if they do determine that it could save lives in some sense. And if you didn't get it by the examples of taking down tennis courts, basketball nets, you can't swim in the ocean by yourself, you can't go on a picnic by yourself, you can't even pull up to church in your car to listen to a radio frequency, if you don't understand how this has already gone too far and we need to figure out the health the social distancing, the safety, but also not completely give up our rights as free American citizens, then I don't know how to bring a nuanced conversation into this because it shouldn't be one side versus the other. There's a lot going on and the numbers just aren't adding up. One last thing that's really important that I've been trying to say for weeks, now it's reaching the mainstream. Some scientists suggest undetected coronavirus caused California's oddly early flu season. Obviously it's all speculation, but they're thinking the reason California's numbers are so low is because people might have already got coronavirus. That would make a lot of sense because there's so much travel that goes through California and it's such a big state. The fact that it's so low in deaths right now and so low in coronavirus cases per capita, there's got to be some reason people need to study this stuff. And if that is the case, social distancing doesn't work how you think it works if the virus has been here for months. And there's countries who are taking it way less seriously like Sweden. Although their per capita is pretty high, you could look at their death rates over the last few days it drastically lowered yesterday. We'll see as it plays out. I'm not saying it could spike up, America could spike up, we could sink. It's all speculation at this point, but at what point does speculation become tyranny? When people like the World Health Organization, the CDC, the Gateses, the Fauci's, the Burks, the Surgeon Generals, they're massively off on their numbers and their suggestions. And then they just say, oops, yeah, but we saved lives with our mitigation. But they're not even factoring in all the other health aspects of it. You can't go to the gym. In some cases, they won't even let you in the sunshine to exercise like you normally do. That's going to have a long-term and a short-term health effect on millions of people as well. And that's not something they want to study. Regardless of what you think, let me know in the comments section. We need to have a conversation right now about tyranny and also about health. They shouldn't be separate. We can't just say let's be locked in our houses for three months off the speculation that we think we know when this virus got here and how to stop it. When the reality is if it did end up coming months before, all of this social distancing is not going to have the effect that they said it's going to have. And even with the numbers that they fed us, they've been massively off from hospitalizations, to death speculation, to mask recommendations. I mean, what haven't they been wrong about? And the health effects from staying inside, the long-term financial and health effects that come from millions of people losing their jobs, businesses, and salaries. Let me know your thoughts. Those are mine. Have a beautiful day, and I'll be back with more videos.